pass this out to you guys. This is going to be a bit of kind of like a chart to fill in a tie. Now here's what I've done. I put the parts of tide in here, okay? And I put a rubric. This rubric is the US history rubric. I've just taken certain parts of it and put it in here that applies to tide. And then I wrote a not so great paragraph, okay? A not so great tide paragraph. So we're gonna use this rubric here to replace sentence by sentence my crappy paragraph. Does that make sense? Okay, so I'll pass those out to you guys really quickly. Okay, so let's take a look at this. So, topic sentence, what does our rubric say? Does somebody wanna read number one and number two there, Darren? Oh, uh, number one, focuses on topics or makes claims directly related to the question. Number two, introduces the topic or claim with accuracy and clarity. Okay, uh, somebody want to read what I wrote here, or what I intentionally wrote very bad? Now let's get some hands. <clears throat> Who else wants to read? The Great Depression was started because people lost money in their jobs. Okay, so if I were using this, hold on, wait, let's back up. Let's look at our prompt really quickly. What's our prompt? How did the Great Depression become a global problem? So what are we answering? How the Great Depression came, became a global problem. Okay, so look at my topic sentence. Do I answer the prompt there very well? No. 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 Now, if I were using the same evidence you guys were using, which were those data sets, right, would, would, I, would you produce those as two things? Was that in the list we just did? No. Because people lost money and jobs? No. Does that explain why the global depression happened? Okay, so what would be a better way to write that? I want you to take a minute and write your own topic sentence. That fixes mine. So make sure you address the question. Okay? Make sure you address the question and then two reasons why the global depression happened. Okay, and we'll discuss these in here in a minute. Okay, take about 10, 15 more seconds to finish writing what you're writing and then we'll come out and share. Okay, I want three of you to tell me what sentence you wrote down and then we'll kind of create one or we'll pick one. Does that make sense? All right, Riley, tell me one of your sentences. Um, it said the Great Depression became a global problem because of the tariffs and the stock market crash. That's very good. So the Great Depression became a global problem because of what two things? The tariffs and the stock market crash. The tariffs and the stock market crashes. All right, uh, Andrew, tell me one of yours. Uh, the, uh, the Great Depression became because of the war debts and things. Okay, I see, I see uh, similarity. So you say pretty much the same beginning part, right? Mm -hmm. And you've said war debts and tariffs, right? Okay, all right, go ahead, Jane. The Great Depression became a global problem when countries began to place tariffs on goods and began to overproduce. Okay, so we have a few things here. We have overproduced, war debts, all that good stuff. That, that's very, very good. Because that's better than mine, right? Now, with this bad, this is a bad topic sentence, right? We've established that. Yeah. Okay? So what did I need to do to make it better? And you guys kind of hit on it. What did you do to make it better? Yeah, Darian? We mentioned, um, we talked about it in a global Right? In a global sense. Okay? What's the other things we did, eh? Oh, I was going to say, I was going to say that it asked for, like, what, how did it become a global problem? Yeah, there's nothing about global anything, right? Very generic. That's good. But what about the two causes I picked? Again, is that anywhere in your data? No. Right. So how am I going to address that question? Yeah. Uh, you could, in your version of it, you couldn't because we didn't, there wasn't anything discussed about the two reasons that you showed. Right. So here's the, the thing. If I start off with a bad topic sentence, what does it do to the rest of my writing? It makes your writing bad as well. Is there any way I could follow this topic sentence through the writing and have it be on point? No, because... I could pick myself up some points, right? By just using quotes and proving it. But it really hurts you if you don't have a strong topic sentence. So always take a second and figure it out and write down. 
All right, Riley, I like yours the best, so why don't you come up here and write your topic sentence up here. Short, sweet, to the point. The rest, all of yours were very good, though. Okay, much, much better. Okay, let's look at my important evidence, okay? So what I should have here, according to our rubric, is provides an analysis of the topic or claim consistently using relevant, well-chosen facts, definitions, concrete details, quotations, or other information and examples, okay? So look at what I did there. Did I include a quote? Yes. Was it from the reading? No. Oh, yeah, yeah. Was it? Yeah. yeah, it was from the reading. Does it support my claim that the jobs led to the Great Depression? Yes. Mike, you're shaking your head no. Why no? <laughs> what I can't have it. Give me a little bit more. Give me, give me more volume. Right, that's talking about a shift in the German economy. It doesn't really explain how jobs were lost anywhere, specifically. Although you could argue there was a job lost in the shift, but it is that. Go ahead and write your better sentence. Take a minute. Okay, one minute on the... So write a better piece of evidence. Are you going to use my piece of evidence? No. No, use your own. Have it support one of the things you support there. Or I guess Riley's tariffs and stock market crash. So look for a quote, write it in there. <coughs> Remember you're looking more so for evidence about tariffs and stock market crash, okay? About 15 more seconds, finish writing what you're writing. Okay. Somebody want to share theirs? Okay, Jane. The text states the United States placed the highest tariff on new goods, and many European countries responded by raising their own. Great, get up there and write it. I like it. Okay. Now, as we're looking, give me a little top of it, a little yeah. room at the top right here. Right, right that corner. So, James' piece of evidence is a really good quote where it kind of talks about the U.S. raising the highest tariffs ever and then Europe responding, right? That gives us a really good idea of how tariffs globally came into being as a cause. Raise tariffs, right? Okay. So, let's look. Does this meet the standards of our rubric? So, it provides an analysis of the topic and claim consistently using relevant, well-chosen facts, definitions, concrete details, quotations, or other information examples. So his says, the text states the US placed the highest tariffs in the world. In response, European countries raised tariffs. Is that going to what we said in our claim up here? About why the global, hello? Is that, yes? Mm -hmm. you, can, you can verbalize. Yes. It's okay. Okay, so yes, that's what happens there, okay? So that's very good, Jane. Now, here comes probably the toughest part of the writing, right? It's pretty easy to make your claim once you think about it, and then you gotta go into the detailed examination, which means we're gonna look at what we just wrote and explain it, okay? Now, I can sit here and say, um, the New Orleans Saints defense is bad, right? That's why they're losing so many games. Can I say that? Yes, that's my claim. And then I can say they allowed over 500 yards passing last night. Okay, is that evidence to support my claim? Okay, does my argument get stronger if I then say, if you allow 500 yards passing a game, you're never going to win, or you're not going to win a lot of football games. Do you see how I analyze then the fact I just gave? Does that make sense to everybody? Right, New Orleans Saints probably aren't gonna win very much, they're already going three, so their defense is proving that claim to be true. All right. So let's look at this. I said the transformation made German people unable to grow food and thus led to famines. Okay? Is a switch to an industrial economy going to cause you not to be able to grow food in and of itself? No. No. And that's not what it says there. It says, well, they were a farming country, they could feed 40 some odd million. When they became an industrial country, they could feed 67 million. So it actually improved. That's just completely wrong analysis. So if we look at the rubric, it says creates cohesion 
So is that very cohesive? Does that agree with the other things I've said in this writing? No. No, so it's not cohesive at all. It agrees with cohesion and clarity, the relationships among ideas and concepts, utilize, utilizes appropriate social studies terminology to inform or explain the topic. Okay? All right. So how are we going to write a better one of this? What are we going to do? So let's look at our quote. The U.S. placed the highest tariffs in response to European countries. We've got to tie this back to our topic. Got it? Hello? Yes? Okay. Back to our topic. So how, what could we say here to tie it back? I want you guys to talk. I don't want you to write. If you raise, if you raise tariffs. Well, yeah. Uh, the increased price made people want to buy goods made locally, and as a result, caused the exporting country's economy to suffer. Okay. What else, Aiden? Um, as an effect of these extremely high tariffs, all the other countries lost access to the larger global market. Yeah, but that's another quote, okay? So are we analyzing this quote if we use another quote? You could in some cases, and I wouldn't be too horribly upset if you did that, but for this, with the detailed examination, we're looking at this and explaining it, okay? So we really need to talk from our perspective why that was a cause of the global crisis, okay? So why was the tariffs a global, why did it cause the global crisis? It shut down what? What's another word you could say besides access to the larger global markets? Stock market. No, no. So trade between countries did what because of tariffs? Okay, so trade between countries became too expensive and dropped dramatically. Would that be fair to say? Okay, so trade between countries became too expensive. What else do I need to add here? Trade between countries became too expensive. What's a way to close that up and tie it back to my topic? It's back to my topic sentence. How do I how do I end this to tie it back? Yeah, Jessica. And this made it, and, and this made the tariffs made the the in. <laughs> okay, that's fair. What else? You're you're on the right track. We should probably throw the term tariff in here. Okay, so trade between countries became too expensive. So with the tariffs, we lost we lost. Um, How do we finish off my sentence? Expensive, uh, because, okay, trade between countries became too expensive. Due to the tariffs. Due to the tariffs, okay. I like that. Now, did we use a social studies term in this? Yes. What's the social studies term? Tariffs. Tariffs, right, sweet. So we hit that one. Did we hit this one? Is this cohesive to our previous point? Yeah. Okay, what I want you guys to do is to do the next I and D by yourselves. Okay, so flip over, and then we're gonna go to the ending sentence. Okay, so how do we conclude this all together? And actually, in the interest of time, let's go to the ending sentence now, if that's okay with everybody. Okay, and I'll let you finish in the I and the D uh, later. Okay. Your ending sentence is weird. My ending sentence is terrible. Job loss and money loss in America. Okay. So, my ending sentence then is job loss and money loss in America made the Great Depression spread globally. Is that coming back and concluding what I've said and summarizing what I've said? No. No, not at all in my paragraph, right? That's nasty. How are we going to conclude this? Jessica. I have a question. Oh, okay, ask your question. So, you were talking about Germany and yeah. the first part of it. Uh -huh. How do you, how are you able to flip 
from job loss and money loss in Germany to how America could have been. That's my question. For when I wrote this? Right. Yeah, I was really incohesive, right? I, I wasn't cohesive. It doesn't make sense. I was trying to do a bad job. That's how. <laughs> I was intentionally trying to make it look bad. Okay. So how do we fix this, though, in our little paragraph world? In conclusion. In conclusion? All right. So let's look at what we need, right? Okay. Provides a conclusion that follows from and is supported by the information or explanation presented. Now, this is written so like for an essay, but how can we do that in a sentence? Could you not paraphrase your topic sentence? There you go. So, in conclusion, how would I do that? In conclusion, depression became a global problem. And then two, the two restatements. Okay. In conclusion, the Great Depression became a global problem. We want to use became again because that's what we used in. Yeah, I know it's not it's not the the best, but let's just worry about this for right now. We can clean up our wording at a later date. Yeah. Okay. So, in conclusion, the Great Depression became a global problem. Due to tariffs. Due to tariffs and the stock market crash. There you go. All right, go ahead and fill in the rest. Okay, fill in the rest on your own, and then Miss Bolin has you for the rest of the class.